Um, this, this project is an in initiative of artist Melissa Logan. Melissa is a multimedia artist who has performed and exhibited internationally. She is co-founder of the long-standing band Chicks on Speed. And she founded her own association, uh, UNICAT, University of Craft, Action, Thought, uh, a label and performance company through which she realizes this project of today. And she has been for the last uh, month uh, artist in residency at uh, QO3 Workspace here in Brussels. This was made possible with the support of the Interfaces Network project, which is co-founded by the Creative uh, Europe program. I have to say this so that it's clear. Many thanks, of course, also to uh, the Abit for having us here today. The day is structured um, in such a way that we will first get to know from Elisa what is her drive in this, what is her interest, what she wants to discuss precisely. Then we have three groups uh, of each time two people, two speakers, uh, which in the first is a bit more like sort of on the about the grounds on which this is standing, the philosophy behind it. Second uh, block is an hour later on how to deal with this topic, and the third looks into the future. We have a break at 3.30, and between 4 and 6, there is possibility to, uh, to discuss between all of us, including the public. Uh, and now I give the microphone to Melissa. Hello, thank you for coming. From the Split Sheets to the Streets is presenting six diverse views on how we value culture. Copyright is at the center and branching out. That what we have, what we share, the culture, the commons, technology, philosophy. Copyright is all around us. It is what I'm saying now, the information I use to assemble the introduction here, the Walter Benjamin quote, Julia Eichhardt added to the announcement that was printed out and sent around per email. And the Philip A. Grain book that, on sharing the, that Jeremy Zimmerman lent me, and the collect, it is Collective Commons, but it's also in a certain framework of copyright. And yes, it is. The forms of copyright is the point of creation becoming tangible. It's moving from and tr transitioning into the marketplace. Science, publications, images need the protection, the metadata, archiving, as well as distribution frameworks to get out into the world and be available to us all. From the split sheets to the streets is deliberately a complex title. And thank you, Matthias Hornschuh, for saying we can't simplify and get to know copyright just on an easy level. We have to dig down into the complexity of it. So it's even here we're talking about the universes of copyright, the composition, the writing, the copyright, the recording copyright, and the performing copyright. So if you're wondering if it's confusing, uh, yeah, it is. We can be thinking and rethinking copyright on many levels, and we can also include the contradictions today. What, seems, what may seem right and a human right from another angle seems to make work unavailable. And I'm talking about the human right to copyright, that it is listed as a, as a UN uh, human right. So um, pressing at the moment, of course, here in Brussels, Articles 11 and 13. And after the EU Parliament, passed the derivative on the 12th of September, it gives us a chance to look at copyright with maybe the possibility to start thinking of digital law from a vantage point of maybe the particular assets of the digital world, the formats and the distribution. Sometimes in this disruptive period, it gives us sort of a crack where we can also think about digital itself, digital laws, production costs are less. Okay, the digital good, it's not a reductive good. Okay, I'm going back to what, what is digital information. For example, if we have a book, if we sell a book, and if it's an e-book, of course, when we're selling it, we're not getting less and less of it. And that way it's not a reductive medium. Production costs are less, of course, the pressing and printing and producing 
and also in records, the pressing of the records falls away. But then we have the marketing and the artwork, which becomes more important. The PR um, is a completely different labor. The, the structures for PR are also different. And because of the, um, because of the digital world at the moment, we don't have these direct mediums of PR and instead we have many, many different paths of PR. So one almost needs small armies of marketing and PR to take care and get things out into the world and out into the public, to the blogs, the channels of information, the photo, the videos, the images are suddenly um, a much more important role in this. Copyright law is also based on a lot of obsolete technology or things that are more in the background now, of course, the printing and the printing of music. The, um, a good example of this is the mechanical piano and also the term mechanicals in music is still used for the mechanical rights. So and the mechanicals have little to do now with the sold product at the moment. And it's pretty much this irrelevant technology that our laws are still based on. Like the printing press and like the mechanical piano, this is the recording copyright. It's paid out when selling or um, recording the CD, from the recording of the CD. There are many discussions taking place. It is, a lively, it is very lively and chaotic at the moment. And we see large companies battling. It's, it is war ground right now. Publishing, music, the three major labels who are intermerged with each other. Sony Warner, Universal, hybrids forming in this oligop oligolopy. The oligolopy. <laughs> Controlling music policy, but being undermined perhaps by Spotify, who begins making direct deals with musicians completely bypassing the oligopoly. Sony claims to be handing out 50% of their 750 million to their artists and labels. And then when you look into what people are actually writing about, the, um, you hear then that Sony quickly canceled some contracts with a lot of indie labels right before selling their shares of Spotify. And there are these interesting dramas happening with a lot of numbers. So um, the income of the sale shares that Sony received in April when Spotify went public. And then, yeah, Sony canceled the contracts of many indie labels three weeks prior to this payout. And what you see is also like partially criminal activity that's happening. Um, and it seems like Sony is making up for payments. Maybe they didn't do it all to some artists. So now they're quickly being like a Santa Claus figure. They're trying to make up for it. So in this big drama, it seems to look more like, and one has in the feeling of observing a sort of a mafia situation of crossfire. The violence of these internal warfare and the artists that can be agile, we dodge the bullets and are also in our parallel universe in a way. And um, some of the artists even who are involved, they're only partially involved, it's almost then that the goods are removed from the artists or the packaging then uh, becomes more important than the actual living thing. The invention and the new comes from the periphery and not from the mainstream. That's usually how it is. And it makes me think about radio. The digital world and the beginnings of radio is this model that we can observe as a parallel to our high-tech digital world. From the time radio was transmitted first in Pittsburgh in 1920, just three years after 1920, the first transmission, there were already 600 different stations airing. So it basically, it caught like wildfire and um, it's not even that, that people, they knew it was a great invention, but they didn't understand and they didn't estimate how successful radio would be. So radio, and even though the Great Depression came then in the 30s and the amount of stations was then reduced to just 300, the actual radios 
that households had, it had increased by 1,400% by the mid-30s. And this was, I mean, I see it parallel to the internet and also to the dis distribution of information, just because also um, it was a mess, it was chaotic. The airwaves were being transmitted by, it wasn't regulated at all, and uh, stations were taking over airspace and, and uh, the hurts of other stations, and um, people were pressuring, the public were pressuring the government to regulate it, and finally they did very slowly. Um, but definitely to see that this kind of regulation of a media is also very important from our governments. The internet, we can also see it's the, the psychological terror of the, of the advertisements and the privacy, the nudges, the psychological, the clicks, the clickbait, and the dishonest manip manipulation, the algorithms feeding us some useless junk, tying up our attention or our half attention, stealing our time, robbing energy. Our frontal lobes are stuffed to the bursting point with a lot of junk. And we have to say, our governments can also, or maybe we have to find also bodies to protect people and not to let uh, commercial interests advertising use um, psychological warfare. So, the in inter these um, uh, interruptions and the energy, and if we have any energy left after all these interruptions, we can also post them some kind of a uh, um, demand for that. So, it's hard to underestimate the importance though of radio and music as the medium and also in making the hybrid humans that we've become. The rural isolation in the USA was interrupted, oh, was, was finally um, interrupted, this isolation was finally interrupted with the programs, with information, with news and with music, with education being available in places for really the, um, a lot of the farmers, the very poor, who were illiterate and who didn't have time to travel. Uh, radio really saved them. The large companies then quickly popped up and were recorded. They were recording watered down versions of folk and country music, and they were already building these empires of sedation with the versions that they thought were better for masses, for making for the masses. This I found also similar to the internet. And also to see that culture and the importance of the diverse culture that one holds a space and make sure that's also incorporated into the structures of internet. And the independent labels, also at the time of radio, were close to the people, pressing records in small amounts, distributing them to local radio stations. The racist and sexist society was transmitted by the shock waves in the form of radio waves when rock and roll was invented by the hybrid of blues, race music, and folk music with country elements. So we see through the art that it was a merging of ideas of a society that would have space and respect for each other. The periphery is where the new came about. And yes, it was then very quickly being popularized by white males and the songs were being covered from folk music and there was blue songs being stolen from the black Americans and there was cultural robbery that was happening. But at the same time, through the popularity of the folk blues and what turned into a rock and roll, we have also now, um, we have a place where we have African American people and a whole different world of where also women can be out in the world making music and all these things, we forget that these are rights that did not just happen automatically, but were also made possible by the communication. So the exploitation and the invention, it ricochets as a form of this that is necessary. So it's necessary for the distribution and the copyright. It's at times it pulls, it's this thread, it pulls the work up 
And at the, at the same time, this thread pulling up new work of the copyright can also then tie a piece down. So we have this ricocheting and this multi-function, first of all, freeing and getting things out into the world, but then also, it can also be oppressive. And the split sheets, the symposium, we can better observe the loop of building up the laws that change the world and our relation to the world. We are active participants in copyright, participants in passivity or active participants. Copyright is there no matter what. 